A particle is traveling in simple harmonic motion about the origin. Pause. So we know what simple harmonic motion is at the moment. It's that up and down or the Mrs. Lee's running back and forth, which you'll never forget ever again. Don't worry, we all, we all do it. So you've got um, someone better looking at least in your memory now. That's fantastic. Simple harmonic motion, it's about the origin. Now, remember when we talked about, you might like to draw a little rough, small set of axes for yourself over here. I actually could you into this just before we started this topic of simple harmonic motion, that when you think about the sine or the cosine wave, so here's the sine wave, for instance, okay? We can think of it as here's time progressing along, here's our displacement, right? And you can see whether this is up or down or left and right or back and forth, the center where it's moving around is going to be this axis in this case, right? But we can move this axis. That's what we're going to be doing a little bit later on. For now though, it says we don't want you to move the axis. We just want to move it about the origin, okay? Uh, it is a little bit weird because the origin we're used to thinking of as this thing, right? The intersection of the two coordinate axes. But in this context, the origin, the origin, is actually everywhere along this line, right? Because as time progresses, that's still the origin, right? So if I'm like here and I ask you, how far are you from the origin? If this is, you know, the regular sine curve, you would say, I am one unit from the origin. Do you see that? That's a bit, that's a bit weird, isn't it? So let's keep that in mind and move on. It has a period of 24 seconds and an amplitude of 120 meters. So they give us some data, which we're going to use shortly to write down the functions, right? Initially, it is at the origin moving forward. Okay, so at that last point there, we have two other crucial pieces of information that we are going to fit into our functions, which aren't numerical, at least they don't look numerical, right? Initially, it's at the origin, so coincidentally, I drew a sine curve here, and that's what you would choose if you're starting at the origin because that's where sine begins. If we weren't beginning at the origin, if we were beginning, say, up here, we would choose cosine because you can use either. You could use a phase shift to get you from here to there, as we'll look at later, but you might as well use a function that just starts there anyway, if that's what they tell you it does. They say it's moving forwards. What difference does that make? If we've established that I've got a sine curve, if for example they said they wanted it to move backwards initially, that would be the opposite, what would be the difference in the equation that I choose? Yeah. Wouldn't choose this one, would I? Say that again, Paul? Negative sine. So you don't have to draw this, but this is what I would have, right? So I've defined forwards as up on the x-axis and backwards as down on the x-axis, okay? So now we've started to fit this all together. Let's now tackle, this is question nine, it's not the 15th anymore. Let's tackle part A and it says, write down the functions of displacement and velocity and then state the maximum speed, okay? So we've already began to unpack the statement for, sorry, the function for displacement. When I say x equals, we've just established it's gonna start from the origin, it's gonna start moving forward, so it's going to have a sign in it, right? What other bits are going to be important? What defines how far it goes up and down? What number? Up and down, up and down. Amplitude. This is gonna be amplitude, right? And you can see, because we, we use that word, that language, because it's in the question, the amplitude is 120 meters. So where does that number go, the amplitude? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be this coefficient at the front here. So I'm gonna slap 120 there. And then the next piece of information which they give us, the numerical data, or the previous rather, is that the period is 24 seconds. The period is 24 seconds, that's worth writing down, period equals 24 seconds. Now, if that's the case, that's also going to fiddle with our numbers. Which number, before we work out what it is, which number is it fiddling with? You've already got this one. Where else could numbers go? Where else do I have blanks in here? It's, it's going to be in the brackets, right? That, that big gaping hole that's there. We know this is a function of time, but there's going to be some coefficient here which change, changes how quickly it's oscillating up and down. Okay, oh sorry, back and forth, right? So how do I work this out? If the period is 24 seconds, think back to your knowledge of graphing, right? If I just, for example, had a regular curve like this, x equals sine t, no weird coefficients or anything like that, what would its period be? How long does sine normally take to come back to the beginning? 
2 pi, very good. Okay, so in this case what I've got is sine of 1t. What if I had x equals sine 2t? What would the period be now? It would be halved, it would be just pi seconds, right? One of the ways I like to think about it is that it all starts from 2 pi and you get this number of copies of the graph within 2 pi. So you're going to get two copies within 2 pi, that's why the period is pi. So you might remember now, hopefully this is jogging your memory, that the period, just generally speaking in these terms, is going to be 2 pi divided by whatever it is that coefficient is, whether it's 1 or 2 or something else I'm about to find out over here. So 2 pi on n, it is worth having that as a fact that you can recall about these graphs because you don't really want to fuss around getting this information, you just want to have it quickly. Okay? So if 24 is that period, right, I can say 2 pi on n equals 24. What would you like me to do now? Yeah, I, I actually want n, right, this coefficient here, so I'm going to multiply that across and then I'm going to divide by 24, which I think, once it cancels with the 2, leaves me with pi on 12. Are you okay with that? So that's what belongs up here. Does it fit all the information that we've got? We just talked very explicitly about the period and the amplitude, and we crunched the numbers on that, so they should be okay. Is it going to be initially at the origin? What makes it initially the origin? Which piece of information did I choose? I think. I drew it over there, right? If I didn't want to start the origin, what would I do? What would have changed? I'm going to, I'm going to wait. I'm going to pause and think. think. This is one of those fundamental things that we've got here. It's one of the very first things that we wrote down, in fact. What kind of function is it? Oh, we could do better than this on a Monday morning, year 12. It's a, it's a sine function, right? That's what I chose because it starts at the origin. If it weren't, I might choose cosine, okay? And then lastly, it moves forward and the difference would be, well, there's a plus sign there, yeah? It's just hidden, we don't need to write it, okay? But that's what launches it off in the positive direction to begin with. Okay, I've got my equation for displacement. Do you reckon you could come up with the equation for velocity? What would you do to this to get velocity? You differentiate. Off you go.